I thought member four, Polka Kakamond, had gotten rid of most of the society members. I didn't have a lot of hope for this. Oh, look who's here. You're back. <laughs> Of course! This is a summit between three geniuses. It's a special time. All departments are preparing to welcome distinguished guests from the Genius Society. Madame Ronmei doesn't like fanfare and probably wouldn't appreciate a crowd to welcome her, so I asked the researchers to keep things simple. I took her to see the portraits of the Society members a few days ago. I wanted to have the researchers make one for her as well, but she declined the offer. I don't get it. <laughs> Whatever. As long as she's happy. I heard Miss Ron May likes snacks and pastries, so I asked the researchers to prepare some traditional desserts from the blue. All of them seem to tickle her fancy. Is Herda a great person? <laughs> the answer is obvious. Miss Ronne is the very image of a scholar. I heard she once took a little vacation on a desert planet. By the time she left, she'd miraculously created a boom in the local ecology. She just wanted somewhere uninhabited to experiment with her life spiral system. Ron May is certainly very talented, but she hardly interacts with anyone. She lives like a hermit. Pity. Anyway, what more needs to be said for someone smart enough to become Herda's research partner, hmm? Hurry up and head out! Huh? See if you can find her. I'm not sure, but she doesn't seem to get around much. She spends most of her time between the Master Control Zone and the Railway Platform. Maybe you can start your search there. I have a feeling we're on the right track. I'm gonna check the data when I get back. Hello. I hope I didn't startle you. This is a work habit of mine. Using touch to open my senses and letting the details of your biological existence flood into my brain helps me understand your construction as a living organism. Such is the basis of deconstruction and reconstruction. Do not be concerned. You are very healthy. In fact, impeccably so. A perfect experimental specimen. I like perfect experimental specimens. Oh, really? I expect the views here had me lost in thought. I don't usually go in and out of the space station, and only discovered today that it was blessed with such calm, open views. It is a wonderful fit for the sweet fragrance of lotus leaves, plum blossoms, sticky rice, and frosting sugar. Come here. Look. The blue planet is directly below us. It is so full of life. This dessert is very delicious. Here, take half. Delicious desserts remind people of how flowers look when they bloom. Ingest this dessert one bite at a time, and the sweetness will linger in your mouth. I hope you like it too. So, what do you think? I can certainly prepare more for you. It's become somewhat of a tradition to bring strawberry pastries when I visit Stephen Lloyd. His attendance seems quite dependent on them. Hmm, an outstanding dessert. Ten grams of cubed sugar, one dried and salt-preserved plum blossom. Baking and cooking are the same as nurturing a universe. The heat must be controlled, planning must be meticulous, and one must not panic. 
No matter what happens. Unfortunately, there are still too many people in the space station. The clamor is not fitting for desserts. By the way, do you remember what my research is about? No. My research area is short stories about toilets. Huh? What's going on? What, what am I talking about? <laughs> I see. What a cute hobby. But remember, the next time something like this happens, it's crucial to mask your expression until you've ascertained the situation. If not, you'll be full of weaknesses that others can see through. Let's try again. Now, what else would you like to ask? The dessert was tasty, I would like more. <sighs> Why can't I say what I want to say? <laughs> you have quite the appetite. All right, I'll give you the recipe. Come and have a walk with me. A stroll is the most appropriate post-dessert activity. The masses depart. There's an enveloping calm here. Just like in the no man's land I've ventured to in the past. Can you imagine a completely lifeless world? From there, you can glimpse the stars that lie at the very edge of the horizon. Following its celestial trajectory, the Great Teal Star illuminates an endless sea of white across both the sky and land. My mother and I navigated calm glaciers, looking for signs of life on that world, and encountered many bizarre phenomena. It was like finding the single correct piece in a mountain of jigsaw pieces. And the process was convoluted and unimaginably difficult. But it was touching and enthralling as well. My apologies. It appears my words have left you perplexed. Please, don't be on edge. I bear no ill will. I haven't interfered with your linguistic faculties. Such an act would be impolite. I merely made a minor adjustment. A few days ago, I made my interest in you known to Herta. My intention is for you to serve as an assistant. Based on our interactions within the simulated universe, I firmly believe you fit the bill. I find extending trust beyond myself is challenging. A single error in detailed research can generate issues, and... I despise matters that escape my control. Therefore, I added anti-truth serum to this dessert. It will not harm you. However, you will be unable to say what you truly think when answering questions related to me. Treat it as a layer of protection. This will shield my research and your personal safety. Once the problems have been dealt with, I'll give you the antidote. I can also reward you as compensation for being my assistant. I will fulfill your every wish. Does that bother you? I believe we will be able to be frank with each other, but that needs time. <sighs> when I first arrived on the space station, I borrowed the face flame from Herta. It's an invention of member number 29 circle. I hope to be enlightened by other society members' results. A surge of creativity led me to explore the cultivation of life on the space station. In my imagination, these life forms would be a new variety that are born as geniuses. I plan to name them after Lambda, member number eight of the Genius Society. I don't know where it went wrong. They possess their own sentience, but are nowhere near geniuses. Moreover, my free-range approach seems to have backfired. In a lab leak incident a few days ago, some of these little life forms ran away and scattered all over the space station. I do not wish for Herta or Asta to be involved in this. Therefore, I'm hoping you can assist in recovering these little life forms.
I do trust you. This has nothing to do with them. Besides, the more people involved, the more problems there will be. The researchers are still treating these entities as visitors. I want to steer clear of making my presence known, so as not to cause undue disturbances. I entrust this to you. Once the little life forms are collected, simply find a proper place for them. The researchers in the Department of Ecology should know about this and provide you with suitable advice. place where the space station stores dangerous experimental results? Why would anyone want to know that? Wait, did someone send you here to try to get things out of me? I'm not doing any private business on the space station. I have absolutely no knowledge of any special hiding places. And I certainly haven't sold any old junk rare treasures or discarded curios or anything like that. You're so cute! <laughs> Can I get an autograph? So, I really can't say anything about her. Autograph? What are you on about? You're freaking me out! <sighs> I won't talk to you if you don't tell me why you're here. Oh, that. You've got pretty good contacts if you know that already. The space station is a mess. Everyone's already swamped as it is. And now out of nowhere, there's a bunch of little creatures popping up. If you want to solve the problem, go check out the storage zone. Then you'll understand. There are so many people. And this seems to be the place. Ron May, member 81 of the Genius Society, a resounding name in science and the veritable epitome of life form cultivation. Researchers here have heard so much about her for so long. But once she arrived on the space station, she just took over everything. And what did Madame Hurt to do? Absolutely nothing. Yes, she's treating this place like her backyard. She's leaving her research notes all over the floor. The end result? Everyone's obsessed with getting their hands on them. Molten cheese tart is the best. Its outlook is infectious. Its positive mood has influenced us all. What's our slogan again? One, stop complaining, change your attitude, and use the delicious molten cheese tart to stop the flow of negative energy. Two, energize yourself, increase your capacity for action, and walk on the path of a molten cheese tart's absolute conviction. Our creed, molten cheese tart is the best. Oh, praise be! You don't know? Molten Cheese Tart is Madame Ron May's top fan! This is how it preaches. Those who offer their love are expressing admiration and affection for Miss Ron May! Oh, let me tell you something. Mr. Scrooge's followers are all very logical, but they're just awaiting the arrival of the mechanical aristocracy. Hm. Since you're so interested, I'll tell you how to secure an audience with the honorable molten cheese tart. You'll need to work hard to get there. 
You need to plaster hearts wherever Madame Ron May has been. If you're sincere enough, the Honorable Molten Cheese Tart will show itself. <laughs> So this is the little life form Ron May made. I am humbled to meet the molten cheese tart. <gasps> What are you frozen in place for? Oh, you don't understand the honorable tart. That's okay. No worries for situations like this. We've specifically concocted a synesthesia beacon. Wakaka, I'm a genius. A genius among geniuses. That was way too risky. Oh, Molten Cheese Tot says Madame Ronme has finally recognized my ingenuity. Molten Cheese Tot says, does Madame Ronme recognize me as a masterpiece? Molten Cheese Tart says, Madame Ron May still has not recognized me as a life form that passes the requirements. I need to work harder. Oh, such an enthusiastic Molten Cheese Tart. <coughs> There's a kind of attachment reserved for the creator. To the world, you are but one person. But to me, you are the entire world. Oh, Madame Ron May. Hey, you! Yes, you! Don't you have anything you want to say to Molten Cheese Tart? You should at least express how you would like to follow Molten Cheese Tart. We wouldn't want to mistake you for an agent of gray bean paste, would we? Good! You have great taste! You see, the Honorable Molten Cheese Tart has always been fighting against gray bean paste in terms of flavor. The Honorable Molten Cheese Tart is a firm believer that people's lives need to be optimistic. They both hope to receive Madame Ron May's recognition and have been working so hard. Of of course. It's not like we have any followers of gray bean paste here. Uh, all the ones who came in to stir up trouble have been converted by us. They went from refusing molten cheese tart to loving it. This is called conceptual annexation of taste. Mm, it's genuinely puzzling. Despite Molten Cheese Tart's remarkable qualities, why hasn't Madame Ron May acknowledged it? It's clear that it yearns for her love. Love from the creator to her creation? Familiar love? Doesn't sound right. Romantic love? Definitely not. I don't know. Expecting me to understand love is like asking me to map the farthest reaches of the universe. Remember, as long as love is your compass, you're on the right track. And in the wise words of the Honorable Molten Cheese Tart, love must be shouted from the rooftops. Good. 
that that depends if the honorable Todd agrees to it. Oh, the honorable molten cheese Todd has agreed. <laughs> <laughs> 